We sent messengers as bringers of good tidings and warners so that mankind will have no argument against Allah after the messengers. And ever is Allah exalted in might and wise. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Whoa, that's a pretty good greeting. By the way, does anybody know what this greeting means? What does salam alaikum mean? Salam means peace. Hmm, it's Arabic. But also, it's similar to a word in Hebrew, Shalom, which also means peace. Shalom Aleikum or Salam Aleikum. Peace. Peace be to you. Isn't that a nice thing to say to somebody? Come in the room and you say, Peace be to you. And do you know it's the first thing that Adam said to the angels? Uh, the prophet Adam, when he was created, the first thing he said to the angels, Peace. Peace be to you. Salam Aleikum. Let's do it again. Salaam alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. MashaAllah. I was thinking about that and I was wondering, hmm, what do we know about this? This salam, this peace. A long time ago, a friend of mine, he asked me a question. He said, do you know what everybody wants? I said, yeah, money. He said, nope, not everybody wants money. I said, they don't? I said, no. What about somebody who's really, really sick? What does he want? I said, oh, he wants to get well. He said, well, think again. What does everybody want? I said, well, a wife. He said, well, a girl wouldn't want a wife. I said, oh, yeah, that's right. That makes sense. I said, a car. Everybody wants a car. He said, now, why would everybody want a car? Some people wouldn't want a car. If they live on an island somewhere, what would the car be any benefit to them? No. I said, oh, okay. And I thought about it, I thought about it. He said, keep guessing. I kept guessing and guessing. Everybody wants this. He said, no, there's one thing that everybody wants. I said, I can't think what it would be. Power. He said, no, not everybody wants power. I said, what is it? What is it? Finally, he said, you give up? I said, okay, I give up. He said, everybody wants peace. Everybody wants peace. They want to find that peace inside themselves. The kind of peace that you can relax and just go. Oh. So when you say to somebody, Salam, Salam Alaikum, it's a very nice thing to say peace to them, isn't it? Do you feel like sometimes they're nervous, upset, angry is a problem? And wouldn't it be nice if you just know, oh, oh, peace. And what we found out is that angels... Angels give this same greeting back to Adam. Wa alaykum salam. And the peace is also to Adam. And, you know, when I found out that in the paradise, if you know about the Jannah, paradise, heaven, right? There's peace there too. Always peace. Always nice. Smooth. But in the hellfire, there's never any peace. Always bad and always things going on, a lot of confusion, hot, fire, bad stuff. Nothing that I want to even know about, but no peace. The one thing that people in hell will never have is peace. Isn't that amazing? Now guess what? One of the prophets who came, came with a message about la ilaha illallah, we talked about that, which means there's no God to worship but Allah. All of them said that. But this one prophet, he also came with a word that has peace in it. And what do you think that word is? That word is Islam. The word Islam comes from a root in Arabic called salama. Salama. And from it comes submission. It means you do what God wants you to do. Surrender. You give up. Obey. Absolutely follow what Allah orders you. Sincere, meaning that you do it because Allah wants you to do it. Even if nobody's looking, you still will do the right thing. And finally, peace. 
So the word peace is inside the word Islam. If you want real peace with Allah, you have to know what's Islam. Islam means do what Allah wants you to do. The way he wants you to do it. And do it in what? Peace. Islam, salam. Got it? Yeah. By the way, who was the prophet that came with the message called Islam? Do you know? Muhammad, the last prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And some of our programs, we're going to be talking about him in big detail. But for now, I just wanted to mention to you that from the beginning, which is Adam, until the last prophet, which is Muhammad, we find this, this thing about peace is woven through the whole story. Always we're looking for what? Peace. Well, stories of the prophets, you can learn so much. You learn about yourself and the truth about yourself. You really are something. You're special to Allah. You're important to Allah. But Allah doesn't need you. Allah loves you if you obey him. But Allah doesn't need anything. And he doesn't need anybody. So, remember that although you're special, you can lose that if you don't do what Allah wants you to do. You must always think about Allah. What do we know about Allah? Well, we know he's the creator. We talked about him being fair and just. But what else do we know? Well, we know that he's the one who takes care of everything, the caretaker. More than that, the provider. Even more than that, he's the one that sustains everything. There's no leaf on any tree except Allah is the one who makes it be there. And there's no leaf on any tree that's going to fall until Allah says it's going to fall. And it's not going to hit the ground until Allah says it's going to hit the ground. And it won't turn brown till Allah tells it to turn brown. That's how much control Allah has. Now, we spoke about angels a little bit, but the prophets have shown us a lot of things about angels to help us understand about that, too. Did you know that there are so many angels that I can't even imagine how to count them? Even if I went to my computer and started typing in numbers right now, I probably could never come up with all the number of all the angels that there are because Allah keeps making more and more to do jobs. Some angels are taking care of the leaves and the trees and some angels are even making your eyes blink and some angels are taking care of the water. Some angels take care of plants. These angels are busy, man. They're like going here, going there, doing everything all the time. But one important thing about angels is they worship Allah. Alone, without any partners. Amazing? Yes, it is. Sometimes we learn something new. Like today, we're hearing this subject about how, what angels do. A lot of people don't realize what important jobs the angels have. Because Allah orders it. But he orders angels to do a lot of work, too. Keeps them busy, huh? Another thing about Allah. He sees everything. He sees everything. He sees everything you're doing in public and everything you're doing in private. It doesn't matter what you're doing, but Allah sees it. What else? He hears everything. He hears every single sound. Even if there's nobody else there to hear it, Allah hears it. Now, there was a question I heard some kids come up with one time. They were saying, well, what if there's a desert island out in the ocean? And there's a tree out there. And the tree dies and it falls over. But there's nobody there to hear it. Will it still make a sound? So what kind of question is that? They said, no. If nobody could hear it, maybe it doesn't make a sound. But Allah could hear it, couldn't he? So it must make a sound. There's no place in the universe except Allah's hearing is there and his sight is there, and his knowledge is there, because he knows everything. Now, we don't have that kind of sight, and we don't have that kind of knowledge. My sight is in front of me, and I'm looking at you, and I'm looking at you, and I'm looking at you. But I can't see behind me. You can, can't you? But you can't see behind you, can you? Unless you turn. But if you turn, then you can't see in front of you anymore, can you? 
So that's called limited, isn't it? And can you see down at the same time you see up? No, you can't. In fact, sometimes we wish we had some cameras when we are making our programs that we could have cameras that would do that. But they don't have. There's nothing. They can see in all directions all at the same time. You can't. And imagine Allah is seeing everything right now. He's seeing everything in the ocean. He's seeing everything up in the mountains. He's seeing everything up in the clouds. All at the same time. Everything on the moon, he can see it. Everything on Jupiter and Mars and Venus. Neptune. All the planets. He can see everything right now. And he doesn't need a telescope. And Allah hears everything. If there's any sound, Allah's hearing it. He knows what you show and he knows what you hide. Now, there's an important reason to know this. Because if anybody says that he's God, if anybody says that they are the rubble, I mean the Lord of the worlds, who can just say, well, if that's the truth, why can I see you? Because nobody can see God. You can't. Because he's way beyond our eyesight. And you can't hear him either. Because he's way beyond our hearing. But he communicates with us through the prophets that we've been talking about in our programs. Now I want to bring up something else about knowledge. The knowledge of Allah is good, but also you have to start practicing. Now, do you know for sure there's a law? Then if you know it, the first thing you have to do is say it. I know there really is a law. I swear there's really a law. Only one God. Only one. There's only one God. And in Arabic we say, La. Let me hear you say, La. La. Ilaha. Illa. Allah. La ilaha illa Allah La ilaha illa Allah It means there is no God except the one real God, Allah. And then when a person confirms it, they say, Ashadu la ilaha illa Allah. And that's the first beginning of true knowledge of your Lord. The knowledge is good. Knowledge is very important to know things. But it's important to know how to use it to get what you want. Now, when we have knowledge of the dunya, which we mentioned about, you know how to use what you have here to get what you want. If I make a pump, a certain kind of pump, I can put a long pipe in the ground and the pump will pull the water up to the pipe. I have the knowledge, got tools and get a drink of water. Hmm? That's how it works. But how about the knowledge that I have about Islam? The knowledge that I have about the prophets and how I can use it? Well, now we'll go back and we'll think about Moses again. You remember Moses? We talked about him. Yes. Remember the stick that he had? Yes. Yeah. Well, there's a lot about his stick. When the stick went down, became the snake. And when he used the stick and he beat the water and the water opened up and... They could walk right through it. Remember that story? Yes. Yeah. But what's the lesson for us? It doesn't mean we should all go get a stick, does it? <laughs> no. Huh? No. Nope. That would be weird. Everybody walking around, I have a stick. I have a stick. Oh, gosh, you must be in the same religion. The stick people. <laughs> but the lesson we learned about, really, from Moses is to obey Allah. To know that Allah is existing and do what he wants you to do. Because what happened to Pharaoh, the one who didn't, he would say, first he'd say he didn't believe in Allah. He kept saying he didn't believe in Allah. But then when these plagues and things came, then what he did, he said, okay, okay, I'll believe. Then Allah would take it away. And then he said, no, I'm the God. And then more problems come. More plagues are coming. More, you know, disasters are coming to the people over and over. But when he would say, I believe, Allah would take that away, and then he would disbelieve again. Until finally, when he was even dying in the water, drowning while he's chasing Moses, he said, okay, okay, I believe in the Lord of Moses. Remember what we talked about that. But Allah knows he's not ever going to do what he's supposed to do. So he never got that peace, did he? 
I want peace. You want peace. And really, all people want it, but most people don't know how to really get it. And it comes to you when you give what you have to Allah. And it's not just talking about money. This is talking about giving your spirit something inside of you, your free choice. Give it to Allah. Now, Adam had free choice. You remember we talked about that? Because the angels don't choose. Angels don't get to choose what their job is going to be. They don't get to choose whether or not they're going to do their job. You imagine an angel is supposed to be doing something, and he said, I'm going to take the day off. <laughs> that ain't going to happen, is it? No. But if, if you know that human beings have choice, then you understand why we make mistakes. Because we make the wrong choices. Everybody knows, even when they're little, little small babies, well, not too small, but kind of, you know, they still know what's right and what's wrong. Hmm? They know what's bad and they know what's good. Do you know what's bad and what's good? Of course you do. Do you? Yeah, of course. It doesn't matter what language either. You know, bad is bad and good is good. Is it okay to steal something? No. Is it okay to lie? No, never. Is it okay to cheat? No. Is it okay to hurt people? No. Is it okay to do stuff to people? No. No. No, it's not okay. So you already knew that. How come you already know that? Well, you might think, well, because my mother taught me, because my father taught me. But Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told us an amazing thing. He said that every single baby, every baby that's born is already born in Islam. Do you hear me? Born in Islam. He means that they are born on their natural inclination to already be doing what Allah wants them to do. A baby is already in good shape with Allah. Babies, little small babies are innocent. They didn't do anything wrong. Allah loves these babies. No baby is born with guilt. No baby is born with sin. They're born pure. Pure and innocent. Now, I want you to think about something. Sometimes after babies are born, they die, don't they? Sometimes a, a baby could just be a little bitty guy, right? But he could die, yeah? What happens? What happens to this baby? Because some people might say, well, what religion was the baby? Oh, you can put a cross on them and say they're a Christian. Or you could put a star on them and say they're something else. Or you could put marks on the baby. But that doesn't change the baby, does it? No, the baby is still the baby. So when babies die, Allah takes them to heaven. All the babies get to go to heaven. Isn't that nice? Yeah. And not only that, they get to be with Prophet Ibrahim. Hmm? Yes. Oh, he's very nice, by the way. And he loves children so much. And he has all these children with him. You remember we talked about him, too. Remember how old he was when he finally got a son? Nearly a hundred years old. Well, that sounds crazy, doesn't it? But you can read that. You can read that in the scripture. It says that. That he was nearly 100 years old. And Allah gave him a what? A boy. And he was very, very happy. He got a big test, though. When you really love something in this world, then Allah will test you with it. Oh, yeah. And he really loved his son. So Allah tested him. And Allah is giving him the, what we call revelation in his mind to understand. That's the way Allah communicates with the prophets. He gives them understanding that the normal person doesn't have. Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, he understood that Allah want him to sacrifice his son. And he said, oh, should I sacrifice? Sacrifice, you know what they used to sacrifice animal? They lay the animal down and use a knife and cut the neck of the animal. And then they can uh, sacrifice it and cut it up and cook it and give the meat to the people, something like that. Well, in this case, he was seeing that he has to sacrifice his son. And he was thinking, hmm. Now, what do you think? He tried, but Allah didn't let it happen. Instead, Allah sent a big sheep, and he sacrificed the sheep instead. Because Allah let him understand, because you were willing 
You would have if I wanted you to. That's all I want to know. I want to see and show you who you really are. And Abraham, or Ibrahim as we call him, he passed the test. So you see that Allah, sometimes he will use things from this world and test you with it. And then you would see how good you passed the test. And it will determine whether or not you have succeeded. Some people have a lot of money. So Allah may test them with their money. Some people have a lot of children. So Allah could test them with their children. Some people, they have a good job. Power job. You know, maybe like a president or a king. Hmm? And he has this power. And he thinks, hmm, hmm, hmm. Then Allah could test him with that power. So these tests come to all of us according to what? To who we are. You're not a king, are you? No, I didn't think so. And I don't think you're a president, are you? No. So that doesn't really matter to you. It's just a story now. But when you get older and you grow up and you'll think back and you'll say, yeah, wait a minute. This thing that's happening to me right now, it, maybe it's a test. Some difficulty that I have. And I remember back when my friend asked me the question and he said, what does everybody want? Well, I want to get rid of my problems, don't you? That's what I want. If I got rid of all my problems and I didn't have anything else to worry about anymore, what would I have left? Peace. Peace. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> now, the prophets use this expression. Another prophet that used this expression is Jesus, alayhi salam. Peace be upon Jesus. And it's mentioned in the scriptures that when he came upon his companions, he greeted them like this. Assalamu alaikum. And just like you guys, wa alaikum salam. Wasn't that nice? He wanted peace too. We keep finding this subject coming up. Peace. 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 And the best way to get it is to do Islam. To achieve peace, you do Islam. And Islam means you do what God wants you to do. Now, you believe in God, and He's one. And you do what He wants. When the prophets came and talked to their people, they would tell them about this way to achieve this peace by submitting to a law. Hmm? So many stories, so many lessons to learn. But the most important thing is to remember, these are not just stories. These are things for us to use in our brain and in our heart so that we can do what Allah wants us to do, so that we can be people who do Islam which means surrender to him in peace. And then we will get the peace. And how do we say peace? Salam. 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 And if I want to say salam to everybody, I say? Salam. alaikum. So we'll end as we started. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as-salam. Allah.